In this tutorial, we're going to look at Tinker and how to create a very simple program. So this is the Tinker login page. I've already created an account. Um, obviously, you can go up here to join for free. I'm going to click on sign in and I'm going to use my Google account to sign in. Now, the great thing about Tinker is that you can um, sign up as a teacher, you can add your students as a, to a classroom and parents can be invited to see individual students work. So I'm going to um, sign in with my teacher as a teacher with my Google account. And this is just going to authenticate me. Okay, that's good. Right, so now that I've signed in, I'm going to come down to my projects over here. And in a, another video, I shall show you how to create your classroom and add your students. But um, in this video, we're going to look at how to create a simple project. So I'm going to click on create. And rather than use any of these pre-made projects, I'm going to click a, a blank project. And now we've got the Tinker interface. Over here, on the um, right hand side here we've got our default um, actor and we'll use him for the moment um, but if we wanted to change him we could just well let's do the process let's delete him click yes and um, we can go into here and we can add an actor now there's an opportunity here to draw your own add media from a library or build your own character so let's just go back into here there are some default characters. We shall use Cody again, put him back. And um, I don't want his default code, so I'm just going to delete that. So you can drag the blocks over to the right hand side and delete those. And so what you can see here is um, your coding space. We can delete, we can move this back to make it small again. And this central block here is where you'd add all your codes. Um, and this space here, the stage, is where you actually make sure and check that your codes uh, and your scripts are actually working. Down here, we control everything through play. We can, um, well, look at what this is here. Show and hide a grid so we can, it's easy to align people. Um, and we can make this full screen or not full, whoops, not full screen. Close it. But while we're coding, it's great to actually make the coding space. Um, quite large so we can see what we're doing. On the left hand side we've got a whole bunch of blocks that we can work with and the stars here are, are the favorite or most often used blocks and up here is this search block here where we can actually search for blocks of code that we know actually exist so if I click on clear and enter we can see any object that comes up with clear so come back to here. So each of these blocks are color coded and the first block I want to click on is events. And there's a whole bunch of events and events handlers and we can get very complex in here. But for the purposes of our program, I just want to click use the on start button. And notice how each of the blocks are notched. And this is very important because that means that we can see which blocks will actually fit together to make um, logical sense in our program. So if the, they fit together a bit like Lego really. Um, so what we're gonna look at now is click on motion. And if we click on here, we can see that these two objects here may clip together and they do. And so now we can move the whole unit around but note how the blue block doesn't clip together with the yellow block um, from above. This lump on the top means this is a start program. And so a good way to use or look at this text is to say, does it read or can you read it say, um, what it says here and, and make logical sense? Or does it, does, it, does it read well as a sentence? On start, move 10 pixels. Whereas if we say here, move 10 pixels on start, although grammatically that makes sense, um, in terms of the syntax of the language, it doesn't make sense. And so the double check is, do they clip together? And yes, they do. Also, anything that's got a little window in it means that you can do something to it. So in this case, we could change this and we can up, 
make this larger so we could change that to 100 pixels for example and change that so let's see how this works so let, here's Cody over here click off him and click play and there we go click play again he's going to keep moving for me which is pretty good and his code sits inside this uh, um, application here so let's have a look at some other things that we could do so we can click on the pen tool here and if we do this we might think oh it's going to draw for us so let's click on stop and click on play he doesn't draw and he doesn't draw because the sentence doesn't make sense on start move 100 pixels put the pen down well it makes sense but it doesn't make logical sense in the sense that we actually need to have the pen to be put down on the paper before we move so if we now move the paper up here and say on start put the pen down then move 100 pixels guess what's going to happen he's going to draw if we now put in here Three hundred pixels. Click stop over here. Click play. He'll draw, draw, even, draw even further. Click play. Draw even further. Now, this is where that clear block comes into play. If you're using the pen tool and you want to clear what you're doing, we can use the stage block over here, and we can use another tool here. If we drag this out when up arrow is pressed we can use the space bar and I can't remember where that is so I'm going to use the search tool here and do clear so now I clip those two together and I press play and I press the space bar It gets cleared click stop and so very simply we can see how we can do a whole range of things in here so let's have a look at some other things that we can do so if we come back to here and we look at some of the things that we can do in here if we click on looks we can switch costumes we can put speech bubbles in which are quite fun so what we can do here is click on here we can change this for a duration of time so we can say that for I don't know three seconds click on here again put some text in here There you go. Clip these together. And again, if you read this like a logical sentence, on start, say I'm going to move for three seconds, put the pen down and move 300 pixels. Let's just test that. There we go. Now, Obviously there's more we can do with this and we can get into more complex stuff in Tinker as we move along. Last thing I want to look at is save. So up here in the top left hand corner, we're going to give this a name. I'm going to call this tutorial. And click save. And although that's not comprehensive, it's a very basic overview of how Tinker works.